Welcome everyone to uh, to hear a short segment here of the Johnny and Gene Show. I'm to my right, Johnny Light. I'm Felix Levine. And before we get into it today, a quick reminder to subscribe to our YouTube channel, subscribe to our Patreon. All content goes up there early. Bonus content and the ability to ask both John and Gene personalized questions on our Patreon only Q and A's. So go check that out today. We also want to give a, a big shout out. We just uh, started this uh, baseball bat line. Uh, it's a nice piece of memorabilia that you can get signed by both John and Gene if you if you choose to do so. So uh, hit me up at Felix Levine on Instagram if you'd like to get one. We're going to get a website up and running that you'll be able to purchase them uh, there shortly. So uh, stay tuned for that. But if you want to get ahead, uh, hit me up at Felix Levine on Instagram for one of those. We also. I just want to give a big shout out to KCL Automotive. John will talk to you about them, and then I'll uh, give you the phone number at the end. 98 Henry Street, East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, all, all car needs. Uh, we do auto body work. David's uh, fantastic with auto body work. Anybody needs any auto body work, uh, buy here, pay here. If you don't have credit, uh, inspections, tires, and mechanical work, uh, reach out to Chris at the front desk, or David, or my cousin Steve. And the phone number to KCL Automotive is 570-534-8497. So go check them out. We also want to give a massive shout out to Dr. Kramer at CannabisExamNY.com. Medical marijuana is legal in the state of New York, which means you can now go to www.CannabisExamNY.com today to start the process on getting your New York medical marijuana card. Some of the many qualifying conditions one could have in order to be eligible to obtain their medical marijuana license in the state of New York includes conditions like chronic pain, arthritis, ALS, a whole host of other things. So go to CannabisExamNY.com today to get your New York medical marijuana card and schedule your exam with a New York licensed physician. You get a 100% refund if you don't qualify, so we'll put the link in the description of this video, so go check that out today. And uh, John. Uh, well, does Dr. Kramer have like a special or like McDonald's or something? <laughs> After you smoke, you go get to eat a Big Mac for like 99 cents or something. I don't know. We'll have to. We'll have I got to ask my kids because I know they smoke and they're, they're a customer of Dr. Kramer's. So I got to ask them what, what, what they got going we'll on. Have to, we'll have to ask Dr. Kramer that question. But um, we want to talk about something today uh, that uh, Michael Franzese had talked about um, Trump in, in previous uh, videos. And I know you've been mentioned in, in a couple of uh, articles with uh, ex-president Trump. Um, obviously, nothing, nothing wrong really on the political side at all. We're just, uh, you know, talking about a couple stories of of things that you know. Um, Are you scared about politics? I know. I, well, <laughs> you know how I feel. <laughs> um, but uh, I know you have a, a couple things to say about that. Uh, well, let me see where we'll start. You know, yeah, I did the, a show in Europe with uh, uh, ex mayor Giuliani that was aired, and then we did the Netflix. Me and Michael Francis with. Um, the show on uh, the mob and Fear City, uh, Fear City on the uh, construction industry and the uh, the uh, five families. So let let me get back into a story and, and I'll relate it back to Donald Trump and I'll set it up for you. Back in the mid '80s, after Paul Castellano was killed, and you know the, we talked about that through Sammy Gravano. Uh, I bought a piece. I bought a, a, a piece of property, 15 acres of state. Uh, in South Jersey in Voorhees. When I bought that piece of property, I had about a five block driveway and, and, and the property now is big money. I lost it since all this went on in my life uh, was obviously changed dramatically. That piece of property is about a $10 million property. And I met some serious people when I was down there, uh, one of them being uh, Roger King. Roger King uh, became friendly with me through, uh, he's one of the owners of the Oprah Winfrey Show. Uh, I believe. Uh, he just passed away recently, Roger. And I met him through a good friend of mine, Ed Leffler. Ed Leffler was a Jewish guy, uh, owned three nursing homes, uh, big, big gambler. He'd fly around with me in the private jets. He'd pick me up. And even when I was in prison, he'd come flying in to see me in private jets. So, you know, most of the uh, guards in, in prison thought he was, a, he was a boss. He was a gangster. He dressed well. He was a great guy, Eddie. And, uh, he, he had houses in uh, Syracuse, so I'd fly up to Syracuse, and he'd send me up, and they had the Boxing Hall of Fame things there, and we, we spent a lot of time together, and he was a major, I mean, a major player. He played 250000 a hand in uh, blackjack, and so, you know, we were always in suites, and uh, he became one of my uh, very, very close friends, and, you know, he passed away of uh, bone cancer, unfortunately, a rare, rare uh, cancer disease of the bone, of the bones, and... Uh, while he was with me over the years, uh, 
he, in, he introduced me to some serious people. One was Roger King. And when I met Roger King, uh, was a great guy. He has a brother. I don't know the brother. Uh, I knew he spoke about him. I believe the brother's still around. And uh, Roger would pick me up in limousines and he'd come to my house and he'd drive in and he would joke around about all my money. And, and you know, you're talking about a guy who was probably in a billionaire status. So uh, he would bring me down Atlantic City. We'd meet Eddie and, you know, we would uh, you know, go to dinner and different things and he brought different people around with me. So when I met Roger through Eddie, uh, I asked for certain favors, and naturally, uh, you know, I would go to Caesars. There was a guy, Joe, that ran Caesars at the time, and I'd walk through, the, you know, the count rooms, which people don't do, and uh, I'd bring my dog. I had a little dog. I'd walk through with my girlfriend, and, you know, it was uh, a unique situation I met with these guys. And to get into Donald Trump, uh, I had a fighter, Prince Bardi, that you guys know that was on, you know, here, Danny Aiello, the, uh, the actor, uh, was with Roger, and some of the people I met with them was was Danny Aiello also, and uh, he had another guy with them, and we wanted to go to the Tyson fight, so Roger made a phone call. He goes, yeah, no problem, uh, you know, uh, get us tickets to you know ringside. How many guys you got? I said, well, it's going to be me, Prince Bardi. Uh, it's going to be uh, uh, Denny Brown, the trainer, who's these guys are still my personal friends, great guys. Uh, from Camden. Uh, he fought Roy Jones Jr. I think we spoke about this on a thing. Roy's a, a great guy, good f good friend of Prince's also. And Prince has been around the circuit. Bobby Chez, everybody knows we're very good friends. Uh, Jerry Cooney, I'm trying to think some of the guys that, you know, I did a radio show with Jerry. We went to his 20th anniversary uh, with Larry Holmes in, in Manhattan. So I was around with these guys and we're palling around and uh, we needed the tickets. So Roger says, I'll call my buddy doesn't tell me his buddy is uh, Donald Trump. And, and, you know, when people talk about Donald Trump, uh, Oprah Winfrey was a good friend of his also. And there's a video, I believe, where Donald Trump is out and Oprah Winfrey asks Donald Trump at that time, uh, you know, Donald, why don't you run for presidency? And he said, uh, I don't want to, you know, the people in, in Washington are mean and, and it's not for me. I just don't like where the direction the United States is going. So Oprah Winfrey at the time is pretty good friends with Donald Trump and uh, Roger King at the time was friendly with Oprah Winfrey. From my understanding, again, he was the owner of her original show, uh, production anyway of that show. And uh, when he gets on the phone with Donald Trump, he says, uh, we're going to come down to the fights. And Donald says, well, you know, the fight's packed. It's a Tyson fight, but I'll get you the seats. And, you know, you know, some of the things I hear about Donald Trump, people think, you know, well, you, you know, I'm not talking about the president. I'm talking as a human being. Uh, this is a guy that gave his jet to Mandela. This is a guy that gave up his seats is what I'm going to get at. He gave up his seats to let Prince Badi, Danny Aiello, Roger King, another gentleman, and myself sit in front of him. And he took the seats behind us. Now, obviously, I don't know how he got the seats behind us, but he switched the seats I end up not staying for the fight because I had uh, a parole situation and said hello. He had no idea who I was uh, and uh, said hello. And they, those guys went to the fights. They sat down. And if somebody looks at some of the old footage, you'll see uh, Danny Aiello, Prince Badi and Danny and uh, Roger King at that fight and one of Roger's friends. That was one situation. And uh, a second situation, uh, you know, I talk about Bernard Hopkins, Bernard Hopkins, one of his training uh, people that he would train with was Prince Bardi at the firehouse in Philadelphia. And me and Prince, we, you know, would go down there in Denny and we got close with Bernard. And Bernard also met us at the homes of 20. He didn't come in the limousine with us. Uh, actually, we went in the limousine. Uh, it was uh, Barkley, uh, myself, uh, Vito Antofermo, Bobby Chez, uh, Steve Lacretando. And uh, we met... Uh, Prince, uh, we met Bernard next door. He was signing extreme sports contracts, so we talked to him. Next door, we went inside for a couple of minutes, we went back out, and then we all went out to a club later on, not Bernard. Bernard, Bernard was a home guy, he stayed with his wife. He was very dedicated. The, rev, the rest of us went to VIP, strip club, <laughs> and uh, we continued doing what we used to do. Uh, but when we went to, uh, Bernard Hopkins had a fallout with Don King. He couldn't get a title shot. And he was kind of blackballed out of uh, Atlantic City, for the people that don't know this, the, the background history. And Bernard and Don uh, eventually made up. But before they made up, 
a middleweight champ of the world, Bernard Hopkins, could not get a, a, a room in Atlantic City. So he asked me, is there any way you can get me a room? And again, I call Roger King. Roger King says, give me five minutes. He calls Donald Trump, and they get Bernard a, a presidential suite there. And, you know, some of these stories of human gesture on uh, Donald Trump's behalf and the gentleman that Roger King was is a tribute to what, what kind of person he is. That's not so much about money. It's about how these guys were very, uh, number one, personable, too respectful, and their egos uh, wasn't about, you know, just the dollar bill. It was about helping people that they had no idea who they were. They were just phone calls and favors from friends to friends. And, uh, you know, the situation of nobody knew who I was. I mean, Roger King did, but uh, Oprah Winfrey didn't. Uh, Donald Trump certainly didn't. And then come full circle, what I'm getting at is with the kids that are in this world, if I would have followed the path of following guys like Roger King and Donald Trump and Oprah Winfrey and stopped going down the roads that I went down, uh, maybe my life could have been in, in, in a different way uh, than it became. And I had the opportunities through uh, these people that every one of them I just mentioned, not, not millionaires, they're billionaires. And I had the uh, the uh, the uh, the luck, the the luxury, the uh, uh, friendship with Roger King, where I sat down also with Rooney, the owner of the Pittsburgh Steelers in Fort Lauderdale, with a woman friend of mine that also put shows in Atlantic City and in uh, Las Vegas, and I met different people like Joe Frazier. So I had those opportunities where I sat with, and I'm naming billionaire after billionaire, but there were such good people that they extended their hand to offer, uh, to be, uh, to offer me opportunities that I didn't really take and I shouldn't. And, they, and again, Rooney had no idea who I was. The woman brought me, she knew who I was. And uh, we had dinner and he offered me some opportunities that at, at that time, my, my head wasn't there. It was on the mob in the street. And the uh, the belief that uh, my life was the right way and these billionaires had the wrong idea. So for the kids that are out there, you have the opportunity sometimes and it's right in front of you, you don't see it, take it. And that's really the message. Do the right thing with your life and uh, go in the right direction. And sometimes when I'm hearing all these bad things about people and you know whether it's Donald Trump or somebody else, they are good people. And I'm just, I, I've said this before, I'm wondering where Oprah Winfrey and uh, President uh, Donald Trump's relationship is these days. Hopefully it's still good. And uh, I wish all the kids out there to follow the path, not not my old path. Where can the masses follow you? Uh, at the casino. <laughs> <laughs> no, on it. Uh, you can follow me at True John A. Light on my Instagram, on my website, johnelite.com. Uh, Johnny and Gene show, and uh, you you can follow me through uh, uh, Felix or or Gene Barella. And you want to give? And uh, what, what's up, Gene? My book. Oh, your book's coming out soon. Uh, yeah, stay tuned for for Gene's book coming out. Uh, I believe Lou Romano is uh, the author of that book. Mm -hmm. um, Lou Romano is the author of, of Gene's book. book. Yeah. My book, uh, my book's Death Haven. That'll be out shortly. When is that going to come out? You think? I hope tomorrow. No. <laughs> uh, in the next month or so, you know, I, I don't. We didn't like it, so we, you know, we've been editing it and playing with it, and we got it in the direction we want. Lou's a great author, which Gene knows because he's been working with him for a while, and Lou has a book out that I'm very familiar with. That uh, we were working on a production with it uh, called Bessa, and hopefully we can. Uh, you know, there was a problem with a guy that. Uh, did the wrong thing with Lou and some financial people that we were backing this book. But uh, it talks, it's a, a fiction book about the uh, mafia, the Albanian mafia and the Italian mafia. It's a great story. And hopefully we can we can uh, bring that back around also into production. Beautiful. And uh, you can follow me on at, on Instagram at Felix.Levine and uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I have an interview with Johnny Light um, and Gene, uh, if you guys are curious about that. And uh, last one, thing. One big announcement. We're going to have Sammy Gravano very soon. That's uh, that's going to be a definite. We're setting a date. He'll be on, so everybody look forward to seeing that. And uh, hopefully the next one after uh, Sammy uh, will be another surprise for you. We have somebody else coming to on uh, another show shortly. So look out for everybody. Beautiful. Take care. Thank you.